Hey guys, Dennis Hubbard, credit a FICO specialist for Credit Firm Inc. Specializing in specifically lender scores, mortgage scores, which 90% of your lenders are going to use that particular algorithm, which we'll oftentimes call a FICO Classic, more specifically FICO 2, 4, and 5, depending on which bureau uh, within that tri-merge system uh, we're referring to. Either way, 20-year-old algorithm, no longer designed to do what it was originally supposed to do, and that's emulate real statistics to assess risk value, right? Outdated, broken, but you know what? Broken or not, it doesn't matter. This is what determines a yes or a no. So big difference between this algorithm and as a consumer, what we get to see you know, on our Experian app or our Credit Karma or whatever monitoring system that is, I'm going to be talking about this on future videos, some of these algorithm differences and why the difference. It always seems to be a popular subject, but, uh, but important because a lot of the information that's being fed to the consumer, being fed to us, you know, to a lot of the lenders or people in the industry that are advising our clients, a lot of the information that we're being fed is based on the newer algorithms, which can actually have an opposite effect on the lender scores. This is so important. I don't believe you will find this content anywhere. So just, you know, if, you, if you're seeing this through the email, watch this stuff. I promise you, you're going to learn some things. Today, though, I want to talk more specifically about positive credit versus negative credit and how this FICO algorithm looks at it. And I think this is so important because there's, again, a lot of misinformation on uh, rolling around out there around the subject in this way. You know, a lot of folks think, well, you know, in order to overcome some of the negative credit in my past, I need to add a bunch of positive counts. That, that's going to help me build some, you know, some positive payment history, and that's going to outweigh the negative credit in my past. And guys, this is not a, this is not a good idea. We're going to debunk that. And another thing that I hear often is, well, I pay, uh, you know, I pay extra payments on my account each month, and that should give me two or three extra payments on my credit. That's crazy. That's not accurate. And I know you've heard it from good sources. That's not accurate at all. Uh, we're gonna again. We're gonna discern through a lot of the misinformation that is out there. I think this is so important. So if, let's start with the coding system. This is. I, I just pulled up a specific credit bureau. It is a. Here is an account represented. Uh, with the Metro 2 system, the coding system that FICO is reading off of. And you can see these are two collections, uh, middle and funding, and highlighted here. Notice that each month, this represents, each one of those nines represents each month that's gone by and representing that charged off or collection account with a nine. In the same way here on the, the account below it. Now, this is important. If we're going to represent this again. The code, the coding. We're going to represent if this jar represented the overall credit score, or more specifically, payment history. And again, we're comparing negative versus positive. Yes, there's a factor of the newer it is, the more effect. But again, I want to just show the dynamic. Each one of those nines you saw rolling across the screen is going to rep. I'm going to represent with nine red, nine red beans. Each one. Well, just one of those counts had pro had about 24 of them rolling across. So you can imagine the amount of the red beans going into this jar, and I got a head start. Because let's pretend like this this particular client had five of these accounts rolling nines. That's a lot of red beans in that jar. All right. Now let's compare that to the Metro coding for an on-time payment. If you Again, we're going to show here we go. So here's a count that the guy's had for about 12 months and he's paid it perfect. All right. Now notice the ones going across. That is what represents an on-time payment. Now, again, the new credit bureaus might represent that with the C, but it, the coding behind that is a one. That is the equivalent, taking the same jar, and let me stop my share here real quick, but that's the equivalent of saying, okay, all right, I made an on-time payment. Great, good job, one green bean. So 
You know what? I opened up five brand new accounts to really try to offset this uh, to you know make up for the bad credit in my past. Great. That one month, you got five red beans. Well, I paid my vehicle off early. That should really help my credit score. Well, the FICO model, this FICO model, treats that as one on-time payment, even though you just paid it off. It's a great idea to pay off your auto, don't get me wrong, but there's not, no, credit-wise, there's not a lot of reward to that, N nothing more than an on-time payment, all right? Well, you know, I pay an extra payment every month, or I have this credit card, I use it, I pay it off, I use it again, I pay it off, I do that two times a month, that's giving me two extra payments. No, it doesn't. That account, the status of that account is current. That, that month, is it current? Is it 30 days, 60 days, charge off, whatever the case is, what is the status of that account? Doesn't give you extra, it doesn't go into the future. It's either current, you can't be more current than current with the way FICO reads it or the credit bureau populates the information. All right, so I think it's so important. Now the idea of, again, opening up a bunch of extra loans is a bad thing because the, the, then it's going to penalize you more times than not than having too many loans in a short period of time or it'll penalize you just for having one new loan many times because the algorithm wants to see how you're going to do first before it starts rewarding you. Far outweighing, in most cases, what little positive you get out of this. So don't want to discourage on-time payments because a negative payment, a late payment, is equivalent of throwing bunch of red beans back into that jar. So pay on time, we just don't get a lot of reward for it. Um, FICO looks at it as, well, that's what you're supposed to do. You, you, you made an agreement that you're going to pay this many payments on time. We don't reward something that you're supposed to do, but they will penalize the heck out of you when you don't. So what's the solution? If it's not adding a bunch of positive credit, what is the solution? Well, we could Removing this off the credit will remove a mass amount of negative credit, bringing light to the positive. Now we got to be careful simply paying stuff off. We either have to agree to delete, delete it, and there is exceptions to certain accounts that it will help if you settle. But get with a professional, run some simulations before you go. Just you know, start paying stuff off in the past. That's a different subject. Uh, what are some other things that we can do? Well, if you don't have utilization, utilization can really change the color of the overall credit score. Making up to almost 30% or a third of the overall credit score, a guy that doesn't have utilization, heck yeah, man, that's like pouring a bunch of green beans in there and you can really start changing the color or optimize the current utilization that you have. Again, we're kind of crossing over from payment history into utilization, but those are some things that you can do. Number one, get the negative removed. And let's do some things that are going to add the most green to that file if we were going to use this as an example. Anyways, hope that uh, makes sense to you. I really like to take something complex and bring it down to the smallest denominator. But it makes sense, especially when we're following the coding on how FICO looks at negative versus positive. Look forward to seeing you on the other video. Like I said, i got some really cool stuff that's also going to be mortgage specific. Even industry specific, mortgage industry specific, talking about a lot of different things that you're going to learn. You're going to be able to pat if you're if you're a, a vendor and a, a, a lender or in the business, you'll be able to pass this information on to your client. If you are a consumer, hey, this is great information to to, to apply at home with yourself, optimizing your credit. We'll see you next time. Thanks.